In the history of the planet, there has been a lot of memorable buildings and structures that stand out. And the most famous one is this one, the Great Pyramids of Giza. And historians can't really prove how old it is. Some say it's 4,000 years old, and some say it's 11,000 years old. And they really can't pinpoint when it was actually built. Homer, the Greek writer, was very interested in these giant pyramids. And in some writings, it has been written that Homer believed the pyramids are 9,000 years old. Basically, what we're trying to say is that there's a lot of memorable structures like Persepolis in Iran, Colosseum, Taj Mahal, the Eiffel Tower, Statue of Liberty, and many, many more. We said all that to come to today's world. Nowadays, there are buildings and things being made that are going to be memorable in history. But you can't be certain which one is going to be a memorable piece. But the one we're talking about, you can. The Statue of Unity. This looks like a statue, but it's actually much more complicated than you think. This is the statue of this man, the first prime minister of India after the British left, Vallabhai Patel. This man is not only the prime minister of India, but he's known as the Iron Man of India. After World War II, when the British left India, India was faced with a situation that was terrible and it was going to turn into many different countries. But what Vallabhai Patel did is keep people united. And he was the reason that India stayed in one piece. But it was inevitable that the Muslims would split up, like West Pakistan and East Pakistan. Historians believe if Patel was not here, India could have split up to 562 countries. And that means every area would be a country. And there is a reason for that. Because in India, there are so many different languages and religions. And they kind of have an international language so they can communicate with. Back in the day, this language was Persian or Farsi. But after the British took over India, they replaced Farsi with English. In the year 2013, the Indian government decided for what Jalabai Patel did to make a memorable piece to honor him. And they also decided that this statue would be the biggest in the entire world. Do you see the statue? Well, it's the statue of Jesus in the city of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. With its base, it has a height of 38 meters. And when it was built in 1931, it was one of the biggest statues in the world. But it's still one of the biggest statues in the world. This is the Motherland Kull statue in Volgograd, Russia, and it has a height of 87 meters. The Statue of Liberty is a little bit taller, and with its base, it has a height of 93 meters. Then we get to the Statue of Buddha in Henan, China, and it's the second largest statue in the world. With its base, it has a height of 208 meters, but the statue itself is 153 meters. After all these giant statues, the Indian government decided to honor Vallabhai Patel, the Iron Man of India. They should build the biggest statue and dedicate it to him. The work begins in 2013 and they hire a very famous Indian designer by the name of Ram Sutar. And of course, he was honored to design the statue. When the design was ready, they created a bid. And when we say bid, that means they tell different construction companies to say how much they would charge to build something like this. A lot of construction companies participate in this project, but in the end, the Indian company by the name of Larson and Tuobro wins the bid and the price they accepted it was $510 million. The contract said that this company has to finish this project properly and after it's finished, they have to maintain it for the next 15 years. 250 engineers plus 3,000 employees started working in Gujarat, India. Of course, for something like this, the most important piece of it is the foundation and the place it was being built at was a little complicated 
because it was in the middle of a river and it's before a dam. So a long time ago, this dam was built and then they started building the foundation inside the river after the dam. Either way, the work began. To build the foundation of this project, 210,000 cubic meters of concrete was used. And inside the concrete, more than 18 and a half thousand tons of rebar was used to reinforce it. For the main structure, six and a half thousand tons of steel beams was used. But for the face of the statue, 3,550 tons of bronze was used. 6,565 different bronze pieces went together for this statue to be complete. And they connect to each other like a puzzle. These puzzles was made by a Chinese company that knew exactly what they were doing because each piece is unique. It's interesting to know that the second biggest statue in the world, which was Buddha in China, has copper plates lined on it. So it's pretty much the same thing, but a little different. The way they made this statue, they made Patel look towards the dam. And the reason for that is, it was Patel's idea to build a dam in this location. Even though it was the Indian government that was paying for the entire project, but the people of India were so eager for this project to be finished and they were such a huge fan that a lot of them donated money so the project gets finished faster. So what's inside this giant statue? It's basically a 50 story building inside this thing. The inside looks like this and you see the different stories. Normal people can visit until the chest of Patel and there is a window there where they can look outside. You can go higher, but normal people can't do that. Either way, this was an extremely engineered project. Do you know the reason for that? Like for example, if you compare it to a skyscraper, a skyscraper has a giant base and the higher it goes, the skinnier and smaller it gets. But when you compare it to Vallabhai Patel, he has a very skinny bottom and in the middle, he gets very large. And for something like this to be properly done, it needs a lot of engineering. And that is why engineers decided for a statue like this, they have to create two different foundations for each leg. And this was how it was laid out instead of one piece. In this location of India, it's prone to earthquakes. And that is why it had to be built with a form of dampening suspension. So instead of breaking off, it actually plays along with the earthquake. It's kind of like the buildings in Tokyo where there is an earthquake, but the building can go up and down with the suspension and not collapse. Another interesting fact is that you can see the statue from seven kilometers away. Of course, the Statue of Unity is a very touristy area. And not only do people all around the world come and see it, but everybody in India is interested in seeing it. So a lot of the tourists are actually Indian people. And of course, around it, there's a lot of restaurants and hotels for the tourists. Around the foundation of this statue, there's also a museum. And every artifact in this museum is dedicated to Vallabhai Patel. The tourists that come and visit this statue is much more than the tourists come to visit the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Unity gets more than 6 million visitors per year. Compared to 6 million, the Statue of Liberty gets 4.5 million visitors per year. And in second place in the largest statue in the world, 3.8 million people visit it per year. If you go to Gujarat to visit this statue, the tickets to see it is 82 rupees, which is basically one dollar. Vallabhai Patel is a very important person in Indian history. And if he wasn't around, the entire country of India could have ended up like Africa, where there's a lot of borders for no reason.